By the way, have you all tried this question and were you able to solve it? No, not yet. Okay, let's look at the solution. It'll be like this. First of all, we learned something called wave intensity I. Remember wave intensity? Now, wave intensity is a quantity that can be measured. And in fact, it measures the power per unit area carried by the wave. So in this problem, the wave intensity I, I can know, I, I can solve because you are given what is the power of the laser and you are given its cross-sectional area. Therefore, you take the power divided by the circular cross-sectional area pi r squared, you get what is the power emitted per unit area from the laser. That's the wave intensity I. Isn't it? And we know the wave intensity I is related to the electric field inside the wave and magnetic field inside the wave. And here we quote the equation relating to E. And it's related to the maximum amplitude of the electric field. So just imagine the electric field is vibrating like this. This E max represents the maximum value of the electric field. And they are related by this equation. So therefore, this first expression here gives me the microscopic picture of how the intensity is related to the electric field and the second uh, term here give me a microscopic quantity that I can measure and I can relate them together right? I know the power, I know the beam cross-sectional area so from here therefore you can solve for E max and once you solve for E max you can find B max because remember electric field and magnetic field amplitude is related by a constant where E over B equal to C at any point, at any time so if I know the maximum E I also know the maximum B because E over B equal to C so therefore I solve E max and B max next you are asked to find the maximum amplitude of the pointing vector so first of all this is a pointing vector can you remember what is the physical meaning of the pointing vector? It measures the instantaneous energy transferred per second per unit area or the instantaneous intensity, power per unit area Instantaneous, this is instantaneous because P e and B are oscillating so S is also changing So what this measures is just the S at any instant Okay, so whatever t you substitute, you get the s at that t. Now here you are asked to find what is the maximum amplitude of s. We know that s is a maximum when e and b are maximum. Okay, so I take the cross product of e and b, and I further know that e and b are perpendicular to one another. So e cross b becomes e times b, and when s is a maximum, it means e and b must be at their maximum. So therefore, it's just an E max B max divided by mu naught. Part C, you're asked to find the energy density in the electric field. Do you remember in chapter 4, we learned this equation, half epsilon naught E squared. This gives us what's the energy density per unit volume. Energy density means energy per unit volume stored in the electric field. And we know that in fact, E is very sinusoidal. So therefore, the energy density is also changing. You ask to find its maximum. Its maximum occurs when E is a maximum. Isn't it? Because it's half epsilon naught E squared. So when E is maximum, the energy density is maximum. When E equals zero, the energy density is zero. So this energy, is also, energy density is also not a constant quantity. So this expression, in fact, is giving us the instantaneous energy density. Is it clear? Anyway, you are asked to find the max. The max happens when E is a max. So likewise, you are asked to find the maximum energy density in the magnetic field. And this is the formula. Half B squared over mu naught. And it's the maximum when B is the maximum. So therefore, you find the UB max. Okay? And if you compare UE max and UB max, you find that they are the same. And this is something that we have emphasized during the lecture that in fact, electric field and magnetic field each carries half of the total energy. 
of the electromagnetic waves. So the energy carried in the two waves, two, two fields, they are identical. So the UE max, UE max are the same. And the total energy density of your EM wave is a summation of the energy stored in the electric field and the energy stored in the magnetic field. So this is a max when UE is a max and UB is a max, isn't it? So therefore, it will be the summation of the two and since they are identical, so it's just two times of either one of them. And next, you are asked to find what is the average energy density. If you recall, the maximum value is not the quantity that we really measure. The quantity that we really measure when you talk about energy per unit volume is the average. It's the average. So we want to find what is the U average. The energy density average is the maximum value divided by 2. Can you remember this? Okay, so you take this divided by 2. Now, can you recall how this relationship comes about? The average and the maximum value. Because, now, if you recall something about Sonder Sonder function, then it's quite easy to relate to this. For a Sonder Sonder function, what is the average value? Just Sonder Sonder function. What is the average of a Sonder Sonder? Sorry? Sonder Sonder is zero. This correct is zero because there's an equal uh, cycle of positive half, negative half. But how about sine squared function? What is the average of a sine squared function? Assuming its amplitude is A. Is A squared over 2? Is amplitude squared divided by 2? Okay? And you take the RMS. It becomes A divided by root 2. So do you remember RMS value? And RMS value is what we typically, because that is the root mean square. And that's a physically meaningful quantity that can be measured. So for example, even your wall socket, we say it's 230 volt. What value is that? It's actually the RMS value. Root mean square value. Okay? So over here, in fact, the average energy density is just the peak values. U max in fact is the amplitude squared huh? divided by 2. Is it okay? Because they themselves are already cosine or sine squared function. So we don't have to take root mean squared. The mean squared, the power huh, that we're talking about is already a sine squared function. So its average is just its maximum amplitude divided by 2. Is it clear? Okay, so therefore we get this. Now, next you are asked to find what is the energy in one meter length of this beam. This is a valid question, just for my example. You know, when I turn on this laser, there's a continuous, right, delivery of energy. So you can ask, in one meter length, how much energy is there? Okay, of course this energy will propagate and then you bounce off and go elsewhere and dissipate it somewhere. Huh? So, how much energy is in one meter length? To answer that question, we first find what is the volume associated with one meter. With one meter is the length times the cross-sectional area. So this gives me the volume. I take the volume, multiplied by the energy per unit volume that's in the EM wave. Therefore, I get the energy in one meter length. Is it clear? Okay, so this is the answer, 50 picojoule. Over here, I just want to show you that there's another way of calculating this last part. Huh? Remember, there's this relationship that we presented as the last equation in that chapter. UAV is the average energy stored per unit volume. And I is the energy transfer per second per unit area. And I explained that these two quantities are related. And they are related by this equation. U average is I over C. Okay? And we know I the intensity is just the power of the laser over its cross-sectional area. 
So if you want to find UAB times 1 meter times pi r squared, it's very simple. You just bring the pi r squared from the right hand side to the left hand side. Then what you obtain will be UAB pi r squared is just actually P over C. So in other words, this answer can also be obtained by taking the ratio of P to C. You get 50 pico joule. Any question? No? Okay, if not then we will just take a few minutes break, then we'll come